Ladies and gentlemen, at this time we're going to begin the memorial service portion, the service of Mr. Roger O. Brown, who was a private interment earlier this morning. Rabbi Evan Moffitt will be officiating. This is a last and gentle reminder. Please be sure your phones have been set to the off or silent mode. Earth is a beginning and death a destination, and life is a journey. From childhood to maturity and youth to age, from innocence to awareness and ignorance to knowing, from foolishness to discretion, and then perhaps to wisdom. From weakness to strength, or strength to weakness, and often back again. From health to sickness, and back we pray to health again. From offense to forgiveness, from loneliness to love, from joy to gratitude, from pain to compassion, from fear to faith. From defeat to defeat to defeat, until looking backward or ahead, we see that victory lies not at some high place along the way, but in having made the journey, stage by stage, a sacred pilgrimage. Birth is a beginning, and death a destination, and life is a journey a sacred pilgrimage to life everlasting. These words, which were penned by Rabbi Alvin Fein, really express the Jewish philosophy of life and of death. And they tell us that we come here in grief, but we also come here truly with a measure of gratefulness. Grateful that God blessed the world the long, extraordinary life of Roger Brown. Our Jewish memorial service is fairly simple and brief. It consists of some reading, some psalms, some reflections, and concludes with the Kaddish prayer. We'll continue now with the words of the 23rd Psalm. Those of you who know it, please feel free to join me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. At the rising of the sun and in its going down, we remember them. The rustling of the leaves and in the beauty of autumn, we remember them. At the opening of the buds and in the rebirth of spring, we remember them. The beginning of the year and when it ends, we remember Roger Brown. For he is now a part of us as we remember him. When we are weary and in need of strength, we remember them. When we are lost and sick at heart, we remember them. When we have joy we crave to share, we remember them. When we have decisions that are difficult to make, we remember them. As long as we live, Roger too shall live, for he is now a part of us as we remember him. Um. 
Jewish people, we are called the people of the book. Am HaSeder. And in a few weeks or a month and a half, we ask God to inscribe us in the book of life. That metaphor of life as a book works because every life is like a book. Our days are the pages in them. Our deeds, our actions, are the sentences on those pages. Now, if you think about books, some books are light and easy. Some books are tragically short. Other books are filled with drama and redemption and success and suffering and tragedy. Most books have a mixture of all of that. But truly great books, the ones we remember, they have all of those elements. And they also tell a story, those books, tell a story that inspire, guide, and bless us. These are the books that even when we finish reading them, they stay with us. Their stories linger on in our memories. Even when they're complete, they continue to influence and inspire us. The life of Roger Brown was such a story. He lived a full, extraordinary, inspiring life. While his book is now complete, the entries that he made into the volumes, the books of his family and friends, will continue to influence, inspire, and guide us in the years ahead. Now, we can divide the book of Roger's life into a number of sections, but the ones that I chose are professional, philanthropic, intellectual, and familial, family. Now, the professional section of his life, most of us know it, if you've read the obituary or you knew or worked with Roger, he was an extraordinarily successful businessman and leader. He was a senior executive at A.G. Becker, which is a prestigious, path-breaking financial firm, and one of the initial directors of the Chicago Board of Options Exchange. He was also a founding member and the first president of Harris Associates, which is now one of the largest asset managers in the United States. He helped so many employees, clients, associates make a living and a life. Even into his 90s, he went into the office most days of the week. He set a model of hard work. But even more so, he used his success to help others. He cared about developing his employees into their best selves. And he didn't work hard and succeed purely for the sake of success. If you knew Roger and Barbara, you know they were not ostentatious. They were humble and modest. And Roger and Barbara were extraordinarily generous. Just ask the Jewish United Fund, the Chicago Botanic Garden, our congregation, and numerous others, it be dozens. Now some people give to philanthropy to make themselves feel good, to say, look at how successful I am. And that's okay, I don't begrudge them. Generosity is important, and from wherever it comes, it helps people. But my feeling is that Roger understood it as an obligation. He was fortunate. Therefore, he sought to help others who were less so. That was part of his job. He sought to be a model for his family. And he knew that groups and organizations depended on him. Occasionally, Roger and Barbara would invite me over for lunch. It's a nice short walk. And uh, we would talk about books, and history, and lots of other stuff. It was always wonderful. And then occasionally, I would invite myself over. Usually that was during a time when we were having a campaign here at the synagogue. And Roger knew exactly why I was coming. And he and Barbara always responded with kindness and generosity. Now the third section of this book 
is one of the intellect. Now, it's not really a separate section of a book, so to speak. It, rap, the intellect permeates Roger's life. He read, he was a thinker, he was a traveler, he was all seven continents. And not only was he well-educated, Exeter, Yale, so forth, he created a home of intellectual inquiry. Whenever I came over, we would talk about what we were reading. Sometimes if I was reading fiction, I was a little embarrassed. We would talk about George Washington. They, they gave me a copy of this humongous book on the city of Jerusalem. I admit I haven't read the whole thing. Classical music. He and Barbara cared about learning and raised their five children with those same values. Now children bring us to the fourth section of Roger's life, family. Roger and Barbara raised five children. And Roger was of the generation where the dad tended to focus on work and mom managed the home. But Roger's children knew that they could count on him when it mattered. As Owen wrote to me, we knew that if anything was deeply wrong, he would be there to, in a flash to help us out of whatever fix we found ourselves in. Most importantly, Roger was an extraordinarily devoted husband. He married Barbara in 1953. They depended on each other. He supported her in her work, especially at the Field Museum. They had similar values and priorities. He was bereft after losing her. He even, this is true, came to my Torah study class here at the synagogue as a tribute to her because she was a regular attendee. Those last few years were very hard without her. And I know Roger was not very superstitious and he wasn't really a big proponent of faith or beliefs, but I can't help but imagine the two of them sitting together now in that beautiful sunroom in their home, saying a few words to each other and happy to see each other again. Now sometimes I feel a little awkward when people talk about a funeral or memorial service as a celebration of life. It's a sad time. This is a sad time. No matter how long somebody lived, we still feel their loss poignantly. But while this is a sad time, this is also a moment to honor an extraordinary life. A life that, as the eulogy in the Chicago Tribune put it, matched America's mid-century economic boom and flourished in parallel with the great expansion of Chicago. Roger was part of the greatest generation in America, the generation that fought in World War II and came home to build the strongest and most prosperous country in history. One time, when I was visiting Roger and Barbara, Barbara was telling me about one of the trees in the backyard. And it was a tree, she told me, that was probably planted during the time of George Washington. Now, think back. Think of all the leaves, the branches, the seeds that sprung from that tree. Think of all the ways that that tree gave life to others. That tree, I haven't seen it in a while, but you can picture it, is strong and magnificent. And Roger Brown stands like that tree. He was strong, determined, driven. The branches of that tree, Jeffrey and Joan, Owen and Allison, Andrew and Gail, Henry and Cindy, Vanessa, 17 grandchildren, nine great-grandchildren, numerous other family and friends, the lives he touched and who touched his. They stand as a testimony to the strength of that tree. Now in Jewish tradition, we honor a loved one who has recently passed away with the words Zichrono livracha, 
May his memory be a blessing. These words convey the purpose of a well-lived life. That those who know you, those who come after you, those who remember you, look to your life as a blessing, a benediction, and an inspiration. Being a blessing means that you have touched the lives of those you knew and that you have helped them to do the same for others. For all of us here, for family, friends, business associates, those who benefited from his gifts, his wisdom, his drive, his intelligence, Zecher Tzadik Livracha, may the memory of Roger Brown endure among us as an everlasting blessing. God, you give us loved ones. You make them the strength of our life and the light of our eyes. They depart and leave us bereft on a lonely way. But you are the living fountain from which our healing flows. To you, the stricken look for comfort and the sorrow laden for consolation. God, we see life as through windows that open on eternity. We see that love endures and soul endures as you, O oh God, endure forever. We see that the years are more than grass that withers, more than flowers that fade. They weave a timeless pattern in a world that is a dwelling place of your love and your presence. I'd ask you now, if you're comfortably able, to please rise. El Malay Rahamim, Shochen Bamromim, Am Seminuha Nikona, Tahar Shekina, and Kidoshim, Vitohorim, Zohar, Hakim Asirim, and Nishmad Raja Brown, Shahalah La Olamo, Baharakamim Yasire, who beset her Kanafab La Olamim, Vayitur, Vituhaim, and Nishmato, Adonai Huna Halato, Vayanua, Bashalom, Amishkabo, and Omar, Amen. Compassionate God, eternal spirit of the universe. Grant perfect rest in your sheltering presence to our beloved husband, father, grandfather, great-grandfather, leader, brother, loved one, friend, Roger Brown, who has entered eternity. O God of mercy, let him find refuge in the shadow of your wings, and may his soul be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. For you, the eternal God, are his inheritance. May he rest in peace and let us all say, Amen. Our final prayer is the Kaddish prayer, which is our traditional Jewish prayer of mourning. And even though the Kaddish is a prayer of mourning, it doesn't talk about death. It only talks about life and about glorifying God. And I think the message of that is that in Jewish tradition, the way we honor a loved one is remembering their most wonderful qualities and seeking to integrate them into our own lives. So as is ancient Jewish tradition, we say together, Yitkadah, Yitkadash, Shemei Rabbah, Be'alma, Divra, Kirute, Be'amlich, Ma'chute, Be'chaye Chom, Yom Echom, Uv Chaye, Deho, Beit Yisrael, Ba'agala, Uvizman, Kari, Binru, Amen. Yehe Shemei Rabbah, Mavorach, Le'olam, Yit Barach, Yit Shabbat, Yit Pa'ar, Yit Omam, Yit Naseh, Yit Adar, Yit Aleh, Yit Alal, Shmei Dibusha, Berichu, Le'elam, Minko, Birchata, Vashirata, Tushbechata, Benechemata, Dami Ran, Bialma, Bimru, Amen. Yehe Shlama, Rabba, Mishmai, Bechayim, Alenu, Bialko, Yisrael, Bimru, Amen. O oh, say shalom bin Omar, who ya say shalom, Aleinu Yah, O Yisrael, be Amen. May God, the source of peace, send peace to all of us who mourn, and comfort to all who are bereaved, and let us all say, Amen. Be Ladies and gentlemen, memorial contributions in his memory to Thresholds of the Illinois Action for Children 
All that information is on the service folder, and for the many people that are joining us online, first of all, the family appreciates that, but also you can find the information about the contributions on the Funeral Homes website. Everyone is invited to the rear of the synagogue outside. There's a tent where you can greet the family and share memories. This time I invite everyone to please rise and stand in place as we escort the family from the sanctuary. Also, keeping in mind your safety and health, we do have two gentlemen in the back to give you a spritz of uh, antiseptic lotion for your hands. Please take advantage of it. Please rise as the family is escorted. 